Hey guys, welcome back. Dave here, and shh. Josh, this is just me. Josh, no barking. Hey guys, welcome back. Dave here, and we're gonna continue on getting these big old motors mounted. Since we've already built this frame extension, which is pretty sturdy, but we're gonna we're just gonna use this as the test bed. So we're gonna. Um, take off these Hall Effect potentiometers, the two of them, and tuck all the wiring up there and remove these motors and these tie rods. I'm going to cut this out and we're going to make a new mount for both of these, uh, these big old motors. And I want to put them back here for right now. So uh, let's get going. Let's take these things off. All right. And get a little wrench. It's my new tool kit. These things come off pretty easy. You just don't want to lose the uh, the nut that goes on them. Oh crap, there it goes. All right, I got it. So I'm gonna mark these uh, left side and right side. I'm not gonna rewire them or anything but I'll be able to keep track of them. Um, like I said, we're gonna be using the same frame here. Now this time I'm not going to build a test stand. I'm just gonna call this thing the mule. This is gonna have all the different motors on, every test I run. We're just gonna be using this little frame. And uh, yeah, it'll save, save me a little bit of time, but you know, I would suggest you making a test stand like I did in our well, both of the different videos on the three degree of freedom rig and this two degree of freedom rig. Build a test stand, get it up in the air where you can work on it. Make sure your software and everything's working before you, you know, transfer it. I already know how to do all this stuff. So I'm not gonna build a test stand this time. I'm just gonna use this back frame as, quote, the test stand. So let's go. All right guys, so the sun has set, it's getting colder out. I got both the little windshield wiper motors off. Now it's time to get rid of these guys. So now I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup with this 120 grit um, sanding disc. It'll be good. All right, so I have the motors kind of set in place. What I'm thinking is there's three different three different mounting holes. It might be very sturdy if I mounted, if I just built up a little tab right in here and welded it to the metal. And that way I can drill straight through for, for this mounting point. So there's two other ones. The top one is probably gonna be the weirdest one. So what I could do is just run motor to motor like a rod maybe something like this you know just take this half inch conduit and shove it in here yeah that that probably will work and then i could just build one tab right here a nice strong tab to and uh i can mount it in there now like i was saying before i've got this keyway and inside the keyway there's a there's a there's a little tapped hole that we're going to drive the potentiometer off Let's show you this uh, lever situation. Okay, so this is the tapped hole. I'm sure, not sure what size it's going to be, but we'll we'll somehow get the potentiometer to mount on here and to the bottom of the base. Okay, now you can see the keyway going through this piece of metal. This is going to be the lever arm. All right, so I'm going to tack in a couple of these little brackets I made for the front mount. So I clean everything off with acetone. I'm just going to get it a little bit of a, of a tack in here. A 
I'll get the other side. You get one more here. And like I said before, I'm not an experienced welder. This is a flux core. But that looks like a damn good weld to me. The other ones, yeah, those just tacks, but that's that's a good one. All right, so I'm gonna let this sit. I'm gonna build up this other motor mount. And then uh, if I have to do any grinding to fit the motor on a little bit better, I will. All right, guys, a couple tack welds on. Let me get this out of here. That doesn't look too bad. Be plenty strong. I'm gonna try to do weld this little bolt on the end. We're going to put a couple of these washers in here. We have to slide this in, put a washer on that side. I'm going to tack weld these little washers right here. And probably have to cut this, and measure it and cut it. But yeah, I think this will work just fine as far as stability between the two motors. All right, so the way that this is going to work, we've got this little thing built up. We're going to put a washer on here. Shove it through, put a washer, tighten it down. I'll mount up the second motor. Push it through. Mount up the second motor. Now that I got both motors mounted up, I just need to bolt these things on tight. A little bit long, but that'll work. And remember, this is the test mule. It should work out just fine. This would be plenty sturdy. I mean, they do have those rubber, uh, insulators so there's going to be a little bit of you know these things came from the wheelchair so i decided to, to go ahead and keep using them we've got a little bit of an angle and uh, one of the motor tests i'm going to run i guess we're going to count the revolutions when this goes around this thing is going to go around too so We'll be able to see what this is if it's a I suspect it's a 20 or 25 to 1 motor But we'll be able to count How many times this goes around which would be the 20 or the 25 and then one time on this um, We'll work on mounting these tie rod ends up and Dude this ain't going anywhere. This is nice and rock solid um all right let's go that little idea of having this i think is going to work out fine i don't think i'm going to need to bring a, a brace down i might I might have to who knows but you know we are we're welded on uh we got a nice thick steel here two different tabs and same thing on the second motor now this this kind of stuff just takes a little while to do so you just want to take your time. Okay, so we're at the point that we're going to make the, now they have the motors mounted up, we're going to make the, the lever arms. Now the way these, th these things are a little bit unique because of the keyway. 
All right, so I mocked this one up and I put the keyway in. That would that takes a little while because I don't have a, a, a press. So I actually had to uh, just kind of file it in there. I used a jigsaw a little bit and then I filed it in and just checked it and checked it and checked it. And there's two different size holes here. So, all right, so let's check center to center. And two and a half inches. That's what I'm getting, two and a half inches. I also started setting this one up, center to center, two and a half inches. All right, so that's gonna give us plenty, plenty of throw. Because of the keyway, and I had to tap that in place, We, I had to make two different size holes. Um, an easy way to, to get the holes, if you've got a drill gauge, you can just start shoving it in here until you find Okay, so we're going to need one hole here that's roughly 3164 or 12.3 millimeter. I don't even have a drill gauge that that big, so I'm just going to have to wing it with one of these stepper bits. So I, from the last time, and I kept checking this thing uh, just about three quarters of an inch, but not quite. So you just kind of have to fool around with it. Anyway, the way this thing works is we have the keyway. So we fit it over the top of the keyway and then we bolt it down with a bolt. Um, this is for the other size. So we're gonna have to do the same thing here. So it takes a little while just to drill it out and it takes a little while to uh, use a jigsaw to, to get the proper width of the keyway and then I, then I use a file so, You know, this would be the last of the hard parts um, The drilling the stuff that takes a, a while to do the drilling um, Welding's all done and then we'll mount the Hall effect potentiometers out here not the best place to mount them, but hey I want to get this thing running. So that's where they're gonna go all right, so one of the things that we want to do um, is get the right size for full uh, braking or full acceleration. So when the motor is moving, there's only a certain amount, like right here would be if we line this straight up with the uh, top of the seat, that would be the maximum that we would be able to brake full acceleration there's only going to be maybe uh, probably this much so it's not going to be quite 180 degrees it'll be somewhere in between and then when the the when you're just driving along and it's it's not under full acceleration or braking it's just going to be kind of moving around like this so i'm going to get a measurement between here and the top of the uh and the top of the seat to uh, get the right size and modify this. I'm gonna have to extend it out just a little bit. So let's get that done. All right, so I'm gonna draw a straight line between here and here. And wow, that's pretty close to 31 and uh, yeah, 31 inches center to center. That's about the same size as my uh, uh, other tie rods on the on the bigger rig so this one here center to center it, it has to be extended so I'm gonna go ahead and just real quick I'm just gonna remake these and then then under full braking as you can see uh, at least we'll have we'll be able to adjust these a little bit better all right let me get that done all right so I got the first one built up and I want to pass along a little tip I just thought of. Probably everybody else has thought of it too. If you use a stepper bit and just put it in here, it'll ream out all the, the, the crap from cutting it. And then it'll fit over the, the tie rod end. It should have no problem fitting over the tie rod end. All right, now that I have the bars still uh, in, um, like I said before in a, in a previous video, 
you can adjust it by just spinning it uh, to make it longer or shorter. So we're going to leave a little bit of adjustment in here. Now this is should be level ride. Uh, we're going to push to go braking. So full braking. That's pretty good. It won't. Right now, I'm twisting it. It's really not changing the front of it very much. So I would consider that full brake. Go back to some type of level ride. And, and now acceleration. Um, so this is where we have a little bit of an issue. And I'll show you. Okay, so one of the issues, so at dead level ride, it's okay. When we're under hard acceleration, there's some kind of contact going on right here. That contact right here, right there. That's preventing it from going down further. So we have a couple different opportunities here. Probably the best way is to move this out with a spacer so I can move it out a little bit. And then we actually get pretty good, decent travel. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a create a spacer for this. And we could do that on the top too. But there are mechanical issues that... I, I didn't solve to begin with. Now on the three degree of freedom rig, I did solve this issue. I canted the motors towards with about six degrees or eight degrees of um, inward um, alignment. And I, I just didn't do it here, but, and that, would, that took care of the problem on the three degree of freedom rig. This one here, you know, we, we want to be able to experience the full travel of everything and that would be full braking full acceleration so we're gonna make those spacers I've got some little tubes of steel that I'm probably just gonna cut these in half I'll put them on and let's get going all right guys so got the spacers in a little short one up on top and this and uh, this would be under full braking that's uh, looking pretty good and then this would be under full acceleration yeah now this looks good um there's a couple other things i wanted to cover in the video but you know it is getting kind of long like i did want to do a torque test on this um, so I'd really have to take this apart again. And you need to know those things. So I, I really do need to know what, uh, how many amps it takes to stall this motor. Because I don't have any specs on it. I can't find any. Um, so, so if it takes, say it takes uh, 15 amps to stall it. Which it might. Um, and I'm only running one power supply at 20 amps. It may spike too much for the, the power supply to uh, deal with it. And uh, so we're gonna have to do that next time. Um, but, you know, we did a lot of stuff in this, this video. We got the motors mounted, they're nice and solid. Um, we didn't calculate the gear ratio, but on the side I did, um, it's 20 to one. But I'll show you how to do that next time. Um, anyway, hey, so if you haven't subscribed yet, hey, um, if you found any value out of this stuff, I know there's a bunch of people that are building these things, and hey, I raced my three degree of freedom yesterday at the Sir Spatz Gentlemen's Racing League, it's on the Discord channel, and I had, a, I had an absolute great time, um, and I was in my other motion rig, but you know, if you have something like this, it just adds so much more to your, your track experience. You're going to love it. Well, anyway, um, Dave out. Check in next week, hopefully, or week after that, whenever the next video comes out. All right, guys, take it easy. Dave out.